Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from NVIDIA. We have Sumit Gupta. How are you doing, Sumit? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm going crazy before supercomputing, but I, I'm glad we had a chance to chat because I understand you guys have some big news. Okay, yeah, we do. We have a lot of good news today. Okay, so the first piece of news comes from the United States where... Uh, the Department of Energy is going to build two new flagship supercomputers. So the U.S. is going to build two new flagship supercomputers. The first one is going to be called Summit and will be at the Oak Ridge National Lab. And the second one is called Sierra, and it's at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Uh, Summit, which will be the larger of the two, is expected to be at least 150 petaflops, and it could go as big as 300 petaflops. Uh, both systems, and Sierra would be about 100 petaflops or more. Both systems will be built by IBM using IBM's Power9 CPUs and NVIDIA's Volta GPU. So Volta is two generations ahead of where we are today. Our, our next generation is called Pascal, and Volta is the generation that comes out in 2017. That's when these two systems will be built. And another very key technology on these systems will be the NVLink high-speed interconnect that will connect all, all the CPUs and GPUs together within a server, within a node. The way the system is architected is that it's a very high-performance node. It's 40 teraflops per node, which means that uh, you get a, a sort of a fat node which allows applications to really get the maximum amount of performance inside a single server, in particular with NVLink uh, enabling the data movement across all of these processors. Now, the interesting factor about Summit is that it's only 3,400 nodes. So that's actually one-fifth the size, one-fifth smaller than the Titan supercomputer that at, that's at Oak Ridge right now. But it's five times higher performance. So one-fifth the size, five times the performance, and almost the same power. It's only going to be about, we expect, 10% higher power than Titan. Uh, we believe this is a major step forward on the path to exascale, and these two systems will establish a key architecture that can uh, be scaled up to exascale. Some interesting uh, factoids about Summit. Uh, one is that uh, if you were to just take four of these nodes at 40 teraflops each, uh, just four would make the top 500 list today. Um, and as I mentioned, the power on this system is, is quite modest. It's, uh, uh, it's only 10% uh, we expect to be 10% uh, uh, higher than Titan. And just to put it in perspective <coughs> for everyone, 150 petaflops is almost equal to 3 million laptops. So if you were to stack them up on top of each other, you would actually reach outside the atmosphere of the Earth. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Yeah. Keep going, and, uh, man. I, I also checked that uh, the, <laughs> the population of the state of Mississippi is 3 million. So if everyone had a laptop there, they would have a 150 petaflop system. Yep. <laughs> um, I think uh, it's really important that the DOE and the U.S. government is investing in scientific computing and in these large supercomputers. We have serious grand challenges that could significantly improve our lives and improve uh, everything from uh, finding uh, better sources of energy to improving the uh, uh, efficiency of fuels, uh, modeling climate change, uh, astrophysics, and nuclear energy, you name it. And there is an opportunity to improve the science that we can do using these supercomputers. Now, why did they choose a GPU-based architecture? Well, if they had based this architecture, this system, just on CPUs, you would end up with a system that would require almost half the power of Vegas. So CPUs clearly cannot, uh, you cannot use CPUs to build out these large-scale systems. You need accelerated technology to be able to get the energy efficiency to, to manage the power problem. Uh, and this is why the architecture of this system depends on three key technologies. A very powerful serial processor, which is the IBM Power CPU. 
a very powerful parallel processor, which is the NVIDIA Volta GPU, and this high-speed CPU to GPU interconnect that NVIDIA uh, invented called NVLink. So NVLink gives you 5 to 12 times higher performance than PCIe Gen 3, and it can give you this point-to-point -point communication between the CPU and GPU, enabling data movement. Volta has two new features uh, or two key critical technologies that are uh, critical to this uh, system. One I mentioned is NVLink. The other is that it uses stacked memory to achieve a much higher bandwidth and higher capacity memory. Uh, stacked memory is also much more energy efficient than standard uh, GDDR5 or uh, DDR type style of memories. Now, NVLink is a new interconnect that we will first introduce in our next generation GPU called Pascal. So today we are shipping, uh, NVIDIA is shipping the Kepler and Maxwell uh, GPUs uh, in our, and for Tesla we ship Kepler. And the way GPUs and CPUs are interconnected today is that all of them hang off a common interface or a common bus called the PCIe. What NVLink enables is that first of all, depending if you have ARM and uh, x86 or other uh, CPUs, you can just have them communicating with the uh, GPUs via PCIe, but the GPUs can be communicating among each other with NVLink. With, uh, with IBM, they're building in NVLink into their CPU, into their CPU SOC. So you can connect, we can connect GPUs and CPUs together using the link in, in IBM's uh, uh, technology. Now, these systems, as I mentioned, lead the way to exascale. And if you look at it, uh, the accelerated computing architecture that was first deployed in Titan and now in Summit can get us on this path which gets us to exascale uh, in the next few years. So this is a very important step, uh, in particular, both for the architecture and also for the software applications and the programming models that lead the way to exascale. Exascale supercomputing is required to address all future scientific challenges. Today, when we build models of uh, climate or even molecular models, we make a lot of uh, simplifications. We, we remove a lot of details because we're not able to simulate the complete model. With exascale class systems, we'll be able to do much more detail-oriented and physically accurate simulations, which can dramatically improve our insight into uh, science and, and, and hasten our discoveries. So in summary, I, I just want to let you know that, again, the US is building two flagship supercomputers. Uh, the faster one of them will be at least three times faster than today's number one system. Uh, and uh, these supercomputers are critical to our scientific computing agenda and to uh, the Department of Energy's uh, energy uh, independence agenda. Both IBM and NVIDIA are inventing new technologies that will enable the next generation of exascale computing. So that's it, Rich. Uh, that's uh, what I wanted to share with you today. Yeah. Yeah, well, a couple of questions come to mind. Uh, Sumit, is this uh, um, is this part of the coral procurement that, that we've been talking about for the past couple of years with with, with these labs? That's right. This is the uh, outcome of the coral uh, uh, procurement. Okay. Uh, so these are two of the systems in the coral procurement. Okay. Okay. So I was familiar with that. Now, a year ago, I think it was at Supercomputing, you first announced that you were going to go off with IBM and and develop. Uh, these technologies is is this going is what we're seeing here will that be the first instance of that or do you think we'll see something sooner than 2017 for uh, commercial sale uh, so IBM and NVIDIA have already started shipping uh, a power aid based system today uh, you know in last month which is a standard IBM power system with power aid and GPUs mm -hmm. connected via PCIe oh it is PCIe um, okay Okay, I didn't know. PCI. Yeah, yeah. In okay. 2016, we'll start shipping the Pascal-based systems with them, where the uh, Power CPU and the Pascal GPU will have NVLink, and uh, and then in 2017 is when these systems get installed. So we already have our first commercial customers with IBM and Power8, uh, 
Yeah. And we expect to have many more before this system gets built. Yeah. Well, I, I know we don't have a lot of time here, Smeet, but w what do you think uh, closed the deal in terms of technology? Was it the energy efficiency or w what was the secret sauce here that made the day? I think there are many things here. Yeah. The first thing is that they chose accelerated computing to solve the energy efficiency and uh, to solve the energy challenge, right? To, to get a good energy efficient solution. Yeah. So, so you need accelerators to be able to do that. Then the second part of it is they chose an architecture where the CPUs and GPUs, first of all, both of them are powerful because they have some applications that need a powerful CPU and some applications that can uh, take advantage of accelerated computing. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is they needed these CPUs and GPUs to communicate with each other extremely fast, which is where NVLink came in. Yeah. So in the end, it became all three of these things, right, of the three pillars that I would say based uh, on the... Now, the full thing I'll say here is that the interconnect for the system is being provided by Mellanox. And yes. so the interconnect technology, the networking technology across servers is critical as well. Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. Well, it seems unusual uh, to be talking about, you know, two chips out, right? Usually you're just, you're hinting about what the next generation is. Here you're, you're laying out, you closed a deal for, you know, the, you know, two generations away. Um, um, and it, it is, uh, it, how confident are you that you can make that 2017 date? That seems like a huge leap of technology you're, you're heading towards. Well, you know, we, we're all uh, under contract to go deliver, so we, we're <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. NVIDIA has a track record. If you look at us historically, we've been publishing our bench, our uh, roadmaps on, uh, on GPUs uh, for a long time now. Mm -hmm. And we've delivered. We've delivered uh, Kepler on time. We've delivered Maxwell. We've delivered. Uh, we're going to deliver Pascal, and we're going to deliver uh, Volta. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sumit, this is very exciting. I guess congratulations are in order. And um, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you, uh, and we, we, we're pretty excited about this. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. All right, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.